Hey, huge crowd here today, huh? <laughs> My mouth has popped open, and I'm not talking. <laughs> what a great crowd. Hello again, everybody. For Dave Brown, this is Lance Russell saying hi. Corey Macklin with the day off today, but by golly, I'll tell you, he's going to miss one of the biggest we've had in a long time, David. Listen to this. Main event of the day uh, is going to be Brian Christopher going against gorgeous George the Third. That's not all, though. David Haskins is going to be here. He'll be going against uh, Crusher Bones. More about that later on. And uh, we don't have this too often on television, but today we have a mixed man's and women's uh, tag match. We got Sweet Georgia Brown and Jack Hammer going against Miss Texas and superstar Bill Dundee. Oh, yeah. We're also going to be talking, speaking of Bill Dundee, we'll be talking to him a little bit later on about a challenge that came out with Brian Christopher, and that'll be an interesting one, Dave. And in addition to that, uh, speaking of talking, we're going to be talking to some of these guys, too. Rich and Gilbert will be here. They've got a match against Stud and uh, Reggie, uh, uh, Scott Stud and Reggie B. Fine coming up a little bit later on. Yeah, Rich and Gilbert also have a match. And this should be a good one, too, because it's going to be Reggie B. Fine, Scott Studd, that one. And then we get into the Rich and Gilbert conversation. We've got a few things to say to them. And knowing them, I'm sure they've got a few oh, things I'm sure to say they to us. No doubt about it. But uh, they've got, uh, got a match coming up here very shortly. And I guess that's how we'll kick things off. Here. Well, they had a cage match. Oh, and, well, uh, speaking of saying things. J.C. Ice was injured in that match. And these are the guys that are responsible for putting J.C. Ice out of it right now, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, Lance Russell, see what you want to think we're responsible for. See, I come out here week after week, and I listen to you stand out here and act like you're God and want to make your judgments on everybody, right? Yeah, well, uh, you're talking about responsible. Tell me you're not responsible for having his head slammed in a pile driver and breaking the tape. And you're standing over here laughing about it. Tell me you're not responsible for handcuffing Wolfie D, locking him in, where when it was two on two, it was one thing, and you guys get in there and change it to three on two and get the whole thing. Yeah, you're involved. No, 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 no Lance Russell, see what you don't understand is you can't lay any of the blame on myself or on Wildfire Tommy Rich or on Gorgeous George. See, what we said was, boys, if you jump into a cage with real men, see, a cage will separate boys from men. And a boy, when a boy gets in a cage, Lance Russell, he takes a trip right down the road to the med. Now, you know what the med is? The med, Tommy, tell them what kind. You know, somebody say something about onion heads, broken tables, and broken necks, Wolfie D. Where's Jamie Dundee at? That's a bottom line. Anything we say we're going to do, we do it, Lance Russell. This isn't luck. It's desire. And we have the desire to do anything we want to do. It just happened to be breaking Jamie Dundee's neck. Now, what I'm talking about, Wolfie D, who's going to be your partner now? Your mama can't even come help you now. No, he powdered Bill right Dundee he can't come help you. Yeah. What you got here? What is that? <laughs> oh, look, look at here, Jamie. Well, whoa, wait, wait, look. Okay, there. That's what gone. Oh, you're proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, what it amounts to, you know, Wolfie D, I don't even know what his problem is. He don't even know who his daddy is. His mama's had so many men over her house Quit it, that he don't even know what his daddy's don't name is. Don't start that kind of uh, stuff out here. After what? all the things that you've done uh, out here. He, he ain't got around. a daddy to come help him because he don't know who his daddy is. I'll quit his it. mama won't come help him. Will you Bill quit Dundee that? Won't no, come no, 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 listen, Tommy. You know what the bottom line is, Lance Russell? It's not our fault whose fault it is. You better listen, boys, and you better get your clock, and you better get you a wake-up call. Randy Hills, Eddie Marlin, the whole USWA office. Boys, J.C. Ice, you're gone, and you're through. Whoopie D, you haven't got a soul in this world to stand beside you. After this week, I said last week I was going to take your career, J.C. Ice, 
and I did it. After this one, there'll be no more with me. Yeah, well, you just keep on thinking that way, and you're going to find out exactly who is going to be standing beside him up in the ring. Man, I tell you, those guys absolutely have no shame. The stuff that they did. Well, we just mentioned a little of it. We're getting ready to go, Dave, with our uh, match. It is going to be Doug Gilbert and Tommy Rich going against Reggie B. Fine and Scott Studd. Referee Bill Rush trying to get everything settled down in here, get the warm-up jackets off. Tommy Rich tosses his over to Big Business Brown in the corner. And we're just about set to go with the opening match of the day here on USWA Championship Wrestling. Here's Tommy Rich. There's Tommy uh, Doug Gilbert. Yeah. And who's going to be starting once everything is uh, inspected and settled up here? Uh, Referee okay. says one at a time. Hey, uh, that's right. Talking about champions. That's exactly right. Belt. I know where they are. PG-13 for the fifth time the USWA Tag Champion. The crowd getting on Gilbert's case and Rabbit Ears jumps out, starts screaming back at them. Reggie B. Fine starting out against Doug Gilbert. Now Reggie wants a crowd behind him and they respond. Reggie was a little surprised a week or so ago. He yeah. got involved in a match and the crowd was behind him. He wasn't used to that. I was a little surprised, too. <laughs> Reggie just takes a couple of shots, reverts them, whips Gilbert over, and he is out of that turnbuckle, flat on his face. Crowd kind of liking that. He claims he had his hair pulled, and uh, referee said, hey, did he pull hair? The crowd, some, uh, somebody in the crowd said maybe he did. Big Business Brown assures us that uh, Doug Gilbert had his hair pulled. Yeah, okay. Standing side headlock. Reggie rushes him off. Puts the shoulder. Uh -huh. Ooh, Not Doug. Success. Doug surprised there. Didn't get uh, things going the way he thought he was going to. And over in the corner, Scott Studd. One of the better young wrestlers we've seen in quite some time. He's Reggie's partner. Look at Doug. <laughs> yeah, grab a handful, yep. Doug, any handful. Try a little hair pulling, none there. Reverse Whoa. the hip ball. Nice one by Reggie B. Fine. Doing a little celebrating over to the corner. And a double high five for Scott Studd, his partner. Doug Gilbert over to the corner makes the tag on Tommy Rich, our first official look at him in the match here today. Don't, uh, yeah. I really got a lot of sympathy for him pulling your hair, Doug. Don't be celebrating too early, Reggie. Gilbert and Rich, tested seasoned veterans, and they are tough. Scott Stud, then back over the rope. Tommy Rich breaks on the referee's command, tie it up, collar and elbow, standing side headlock. I just happened to be watching, and Big Business Brown just handed something to Doug Gilbert outside, which Doug put in his tights. We better watch him closely as the match continues here. Beautiful lead frog, followed by drop kick on both Rich and Gilbert. Scott Studd looking good. Gilbert on one side of the ring, Rich on the other side. Still got some activity to take care of, boys. Tommy started back in the ring, and now they call a conference over here. Big Business Brown have a little bit of a huddle. I was looking to see if I saw anything else change no. hands. No, nope, didn't see it. Oh, now you got the plan together, uh-huh. Tommy Rich on his knees, shake hands, yeah. let's be friends. Don't do it, Scott. Tommy Rich moving in close enough, look out, Scott Studd, uh-huh. He cocked a hand back there, he was ready for Rich. Why is move when you're dealing with Rich and Gilbert? 
They tie it up again here. Into the rope. Scott. Oh, runs into the D. Uh, Doug Gilbert back in the corner. Now Tommy Rich to the corner makes the tag on Doug Gilbert. One parting shot, a knee lift as he leaves. And Scott has not gotten back to his feet. Now Doug Gilbert, oh, got him right in the back. Right hand doubled up. He nails Reggie B. Fine while he's at it. Reggie comes through the ropes after him. Meanwhile, Rich and Gilbert doubling up on Scott Studd. Rich off the ropes. Doug Gilbert steps outside after the tag. He was slow to do it. Rich uh -huh. undoes the adhesive tape around his wrist, and he's choking Scott Studd. Come on, ref. That's one of those tricks that he'd learned from Doug Gilbert. I've seen Doug do that time after time, and it looks doing like... Doing it right now. Yeah, Look there he goes. He's it. doing the same thing. Scott Studd being choked by Doug Gilbert. Referee Bill Rush, more than his hands full today. As Rich rakes him across the eye. Close line by Tommy, over to the corner and the tag on Doug Gilbert, back in. He picks up Scott Studd. Keep in mind, Scott's been choked by both of them in the last couple of minutes. He rolls him down, shoulders on the mat. Referee's not looking. And from behind, Tommy Rich broke it up. Reggie keeps trying to get in, and the referee staying right on his case. Big backdrop. As Doug Gilbert moves in behind, Scott Scud, Scott Scud grabs him by the hair, puts the tights, stands him up for a suplex, and drops him down. Scott Studd has really taken a beating here in this match the last few minutes, and yet in spite of that, he still almost got in on him a moment ago. He ducks under, takes them both down, nice move. Reggie yelling for the tag, screaming for the tag. Scott struggling to get there. Did he get the tag? Yep, I believe he did. Here's Reggie. Now it's all four of them in there, David. Scott Studd goes for Tommy Rich. Reggie is over with Doug Gilbert. Big Business Brown has just handed Tommy Rich a chain, and now Tommy just hands it back out. And Big Business, there you saw it briefly, Big Business Brown trying to put it away before the referee sees it. Meanwhile, the count of three falls, and Reggie B. Fine has been pinned. It's going to be Rich and Gilbert with a victory in the opener. They got it. We'll take time out. Be back in a moment. J.C. Ice, Jamie Dundee injured, and I can tell you he will not be here today. We want to see if we can get Wolfie out here maybe and talk a little bit about the situation and uh, get an update on J.C. Ice's uh, condition. He does have the tag title belt with him along with a hubcap, of course. Uh, they won the titles. The titles had been won, and then all of a sudden, all the other things started to happen with the table and the handcuffs and all of that, and Wolfie, first, how's J.C. doing? Well, he's laying up in the bed, and I, I hate, actually, to have to carry this with me here to have two belts, because it should be around his waist, because he worked just as hard as I did to become the champion for the fifth time, like you said earlier, the fifth time. And, Dave, it was probably the most gratifying of the times to win the title. We've won them before, you know. But this time, we've been through so much. I've had my eye put out. I've been whipped with belts. I've had my head shaved. I tell you, this time, it really felt good. And then all of a sudden, to know that I get handcuffed and there's nothing I can do while they're sitting here beating my partner up, they pop it through a table. And as you've seen on that tape, that, that was incredible. That was just one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in my life, and I, I'm really glad that he came out as good as he did because he, he could have got hurt a lot worse. I don't know when he's going to be back. But as far as this big business talking about these question marks and these people that won't be on my side, 
I'm not stupid, I'll have you know that. I am not a dumb man, so what I've done, I've got two plane tickets. And those plane tickets are in the hands of my two partners. And those two partners, they're gonna be here this week. And guys, let me tell you something. These two individuals are going to scare you to death. You better run, you had better hide because Wolfie D has got friends on his side, and you better believe it. And I made a promise to J.C. Ice, and I'm gonna make a promise to these people, that Tommy Rich and Doug Gilbert, I'm gonna bring a table wherever I go, and when I get the opportunity, I'm gonna pick you up in that pile driver, and I'm gonna run your head right through that table, just like you did my partner, and don't you forget it. Wolfie D will have not one partner, but two coming up this week. He's gonna be going against Tommy Rich, Doug Gilbert, and gorgeous George third in a six-man match. Got some action coming up right here. He's going to be wrestling as a single. Here comes Edric Hines, his opponent, headed to the ring, and we're just about set to get back into USWA wrestling action right here in the studio today. Okay, Edric climbs in. Referee Bill Rush says, let's get it on, and bell time is. We have officially started, and Wolfie gone thrown across the ring, puts a foot up, Dex. Uh, Edric and then follows up with a clothesline that puts him down again. I believe he's fired up. I think you're right. Edric Hines uh, tried to attack him before the bell even sounded. It doesn't work out well usually when that happens. Uh, that seems to be the case here. Wolfie catches the boot, spins him around. Edric Hines up in the air, and Wolfie D drops him down. Boom! He hits him with a big right hand. Wolfie D. No doubt about this young man being focused. He is indeed. Still very upset, obviously, over his partner, J.C. Ice, not being here, injured in a match earlier this week. But he's ready for retribution. And look out, I see Tommy Rich wandering this way, right in front of the table. Tommy, just stay out of it. You've got a match sign. Count of one, two. It's That's over. It. Uh, Doug Gilbert is sneaking around the other side of the ring. Rich coming on one side, Gilbert on the other. Big business Brown in the middle. They've got Wolfie D trapped in the ring. Oh, this is what they like. Always get a pile of people out here on one guy. And here, that's Wolfie's dad who is out there. He's coming in, swinging away. This big guy. Going after Rich with a vengeance. Here comes gorgeous George the third. He jumps Wolfie's dad from behind. Rich Gilbert, gorgeous George the third against Wolfie D and his dad. And oh, look at that, Mabel. Wolfie wasn't kidding when he said he had some friends. The huge one over there with gorgeous short the third. Wolfie D's dad is no small fry either. Big son of a gun and Mabel squashes gorgeous short the third. And look at Wolfie. Wolfie, Wolfie looks like a midget compared to those two guys. <laughs> He's inviting them in. Doug Gilbert accepts. Here's Rich. Here's Gorgeous George III. They're all back in there. Oh, they don't like these odds, though, Dave. It's three on three. Yeah, it's even. They don't like it at all. Mabel clotheslines Doug Gilbert. Tommy Rich. Gorgeous George III figure it's time to get out of here. And there they go. They're gone. Here they come. Man, what a team you've got together here. Oh, whoa, Wolfie. Hey. Where did you get these big gentlemen? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Come on over here. Let me tell you something, Lance. Anybody that thinks Wolfie D ain't got friends, you're crazy. Because as, if you didn't know, I live in Nashville, Tennessee, and so does this big man right here. And when I called him up, it's an eight big guy, I need some help. He said, sure thing, Wolfie D. And for those of you who don't know, this big man right here is my daddy, Papa D. That's right. And let me tell you something about him. 
He never claimed to be a professional wrestler, but he's a darn good security man, and that's how he makes his living, by throwing people around. So Rich, Gilbert, Gorgeous George, you just come on, because if you look right here, I got the beef, baby. You got the beef. I got to tell you, Pete, we saw you. You just, you just had to get in there and give a little help when Wolfie was in trouble. You know, Lancer, evidently, Mr. Rich and Mr. Gilbert are not aware of the mistake they've made. I've always taught Wolfie, since he was a little pup, take care of himself, fight his own fights. I never stuck my nose in. When they made the mistake was when they touched Mama D. Yeah. That's not only, that's not only this kid's mama, it's my woman that they put their hands on. And while Wolfie, while Wolfie hadn't been blessed with being six foot nine, 330 pounds, he's got more desire than anybody walking the face of it. He got a heart that's big enough for a six foot nine guy. Mabel, son of a gun, it's been a while since we've seen you, big man. I think the question was, does Wolfie D have any friends? Does he have any friends? Wolfie D and Jamie Dundee are from the hood. And brothers from the hood always stick together. You know it. I want to tell you something right now. I've got your back, and we're going to rid the USWA of those three goofs that's right. this week, brother. That's right, man. We're Guaranteed. Gonna I mean, anybody that's second guess it, just take a look around. Look at all the signs. Look at all this. We're going to get you guys. All right, Mabel, Papa D, and Wolfie D. We're going to be back. I love it. I am tickled to death, David. Someone out here right now who, after a 20-year struggle, was successful in, in becoming unified world champion. Talking about the superstar, Bill Dundee. Here he is right here. He's got the belt in his hand. I want to talk to him not only about that belt. He's, uh, he's got a, a match coming up, but also a couple of other things going on uh, with him, too, in the USWA in the days ahead. Greeted by all the fans headed this way. Bill, we got a couple of things I'd like to talk to you about. First, let's talk about Rich and Gilbert and that situation with PG-13. I know you got a deep personal interest in it. Well, here's the thing, Lance. Uh, Dave, Mr. Lance, he's standing over. I'm looking at you, Lance, and calling Dave Lance. I'm sorry, Mr. Brown, because I got a lot of things on my mind. You're right. Now, you got to have an edge on everything that you do, right? And I have never said that Tommy Rich or Doug Gilbert, what they do is right but they usually get what they say they're going to do done. I told Jamie and I told Wolfie D, boys, you're getting in a cage with guys that's been around a long time. And that's the key word here, brother, being around a long time. You learn an awful lot. And Jamie, well, I know I've been dropped on my head and my neck's been hurt too, and I know how you're feeling, son, but it will get better, and I'm sure your day will come when you can jump back in the ring and get hold of Rich and Gilbert. Now, I know the other little thing you're thinking about, Dave. What am I doing in a four-pole Russian roulette and a title match all at the same time. Well, that's exactly I was going to ask you about that. I know that, uh, that the promoter had booked you in a uh, world title match here, which has an interesting stipulation, and now I find out you got another match against Brian Christopher, and uh, let's, first let's talk about this one. Let's talk about this luck of the draw match first, and then I want to talk about that other one. All right, now, the luck of the draw works. You bring a, a, a big jar, a fish bowl down to ringside. You put all the names of USWA or anybody else that wants to be in this Put him in, you draw one out, and Bill Dundee wrestles him for that belt that night. All right, as I understand it, now correct me if I'm wrong, you're going to have a fan draw, and whoever they draw out, that's, that's your opponent. That's what, that's what Eddie Marlin says. He books him. That's what he said. That's what we'll do. So we let the fan draw the, my opponent, and I wrestle him that night. Well, that, uh, that, that gives everyone uh, a, a shot at a world title, uh, which is a difficult thing working your way up. So it is, uh, it is an interesting way for anyone, perhaps, to get the world title match. But now, let me, let's talk... Let's talk about, uh, oh, oh, yeah, uh, uh, one other thing. Uh, Lawler, what, Lawler promised uh, the title match? Well, that's it, but I never made the rules on this. He'll still get it, put his name in the ball. He'll probably show up. He'll probably be the one that comes down here and gets it. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, Dave. All the names will be in the ball. Some fan will pick him out, and that's who wrestles. Okay, that's a tough match, no doubt about it. you right. got to defend the world title. Why in the world have this other one with the four poles? Well, I'll tell you. And it's right back to the same thing I told Jimmy and Wolfie. They think because they're 20 years old and they're running around doing this and they're running around doing that, that nobody else has ever done that. 
Well, Brian Christopher is the same thing. He knew that match was signed, but he come around. He said, Eddie Marlin, you just going to forget all about Mr. Future? You going to forget all about Brian Christopher? So he really demanded the match. And he came up with a stipulation. You put four poles, you got, what, uh, uh, and his chain and my bull whip and one and two zamp on a box, right? Okay, That's so the kind of how it works. So, and, and if you climb up there, you get to use it as a weapon, but there might not be anything in that particular box, right? That's right. It's so kind of like going down to Tunica and gambling. Whatever cards they deal you, that's the ones you get. But let me tell you something, Brian Christopher. It's the same thing that I told Jamie and Wolfie. You're not dealing with no kid around the block right here, brother. I've been places where they wouldn't have woke you up in the morning, son. And you're right. Whatever you've done, I've already done. Wherever you've been, I've already been. And wherever you're going, son, I've been there twice. And it ain't all rosy on the other side. When you get this belt, brother, or anything else, everybody goes gunning for you. You seem to be a nice guy until you get the world belt. You remember a guy named Cassius Clay? When he was a gold Olympic boxer, he was a great guy when he was just won the gold medal. When he got the big belt, became Muhammad Ali, everybody was gunning for him. Well, brother, he held on to it for a long time, and I'm going to hold on to this one. Because you know what, punk? Youth and life, that's what life is wasted on, is youth, brother, because you think you're going to live forever, you think you can't be hurt, and you think nothing can bother you. Well, let me tell you, son, when you meet up and down the pike a long time, you'll discover that your knees hurt, your shoulder hurts, and that's when you got to get that gut feeling, climb into that ring, when you're hurting before you get in it, and you got to give it your best shot. Because I was 21 once, too, punk, and I ain't forgot it. I thought I could whoop everybody. But let me give you a little bit of advice. When John Wayne died, I figured out everybody was going to get a little older and die. Well, let me tell you something, punk. You get that match, you get it, and it ain't going to go long because the best thing that I got is this belt, and I'm going to defend that on night. Whoever comes out of the fishbowl, and I'm taking you out first. All right, Bill. Here's a man who's got two very tough matches coming up this very week. Good luck to you and both of them, Bill. And we'll see you at the arena. We'll see you right back here in just a moment. Dave. Sweet Georgia Brown has arrived with her entourage. Boy, look at the size of one of those entourages. Jack yeah. Hammer, her partner in this mixed man-ladies tag match. And here come their opponents. Miss Texas and superstar Bill Dundee, the unified world champion. Diamond Mike is the only interloper in there, and hopefully he'll be out of there before long, but I still don't trust him around the ring. Mixed man ladies tag match, of course, uh, when the gals go in, when one goes in, the other one is supposed to make the entry in the same way with men. Uh, it doesn't always happen that way, but that's the way it's supposed to be, Dave. Those are the rules for the mixed man's and ladies tag team match. That's where we are, the USWA right now with action just about to get underway. A few words from Bill Dundee over to Diamond Mike, I'm sure, cautioning him that he'd best stay out of the action. It's Jack Hammer against Bill Dundee as we get underway. Not the first time that Dundee has looked up at a mountain across from him, and you noticed, didn't slow him down, grabbed the arm, turned it around, whipped the right hand in there as the superstar with that arm. Using the weight of Jack Hammer, takes him right over and down. Jack Hammer, Dundee, tie it up. Whoa, Dundee moved out of the way, and Jack Hammer hit nothing but the turnbuckles. Bill Dundee capitalizes, gets the skyscraper off his feet, Look at Miss Texas in there. She's ready to, and here comes Sweet Georgia Brown. And Dundee runs her out of there as Jack Hammer. Suffering in the midsection. He's going to make the tag, Hammer does, and that brings Miss Texas in. So now the ladies take over. Miss Texas, we've remarked so many times what an excellent athlete she is. She took the hip toss, but that sweet Georgia Brown held on, and they went rolling, David. They were just rolling around the ring there. Both of them tied up. Now over to the ring, uh, uh, to the uh, uh, rope, and sweet Georgia Brown is choking Miss Texas with it. Pounds away right in the lower back with that double axe handle, and coming in, she wasn't quick enough. Miss Texas grabs her by the hair, picks her up, 
takes her to the center of the ring and drills her with her right hand. She works out on a regular basis, does Miss Texas. And she is some kind of tough. Dundee coming in saying, wait a minute, get out of here to Jack Hammer. Dundee saying to Miss Texas, slide on out. Let me take this big guy. Jack Hammer circling as Dundee comes in. Ties it up straight away, and the weight just too much. Backing Dundee into the corner. And look at sweet Georgia Brown from the outside. Holding Bill Dundee in the corner. Jack Hammer with a boot to the midsection. Now he's got Dundee up on his shoulder. Slams him in the middle of the ring. Miss Texas chasing Georgia Brown around the ring. Jack Hammer missed that time. Bill Dundee struggles back to his feet. He's over to the corner. He's knocked into the corner. Here comes Miss Texas in. Here comes Georgia. Jack Hammer steps outside. And the two women tie it up here again. Georgia. Oh, into the ropes. Bill Dundee, for good measure, just trips her up while she's over there. Yes, sort of, he did. Sort of a payback there from Billy. Got her. Whoa. And meanwhile, Dundee's got Diamond Mike and smacked him in the face. Bill Dundee and Miss Texas with the celebration. We'll be back with more action. Gorgeous George coming in against Brian Christopher in a moment. This Brian Christopher, whenever you see him, you know doggone well, here is a guy that's just got his heart right flat into what he's doing, and that is being the best, the USWA champion. He is the type that will get you a little irritated sometime, even though you may like him, because he does get smart. <laughs> he knows he is. He's tough, too. Let's look at Brian Christopher in action. You can have the stars of the USWA in your hometown. It's America's number one fundraiser, USWA Wrestling. The stars, the action, the excitement, USWA Wrestling. For more information on how you can raise money for your organization, write the USWA, Post Office Box 1783, Hendersonville, Tennessee, 37077, or call 615-824-8523. USWA Wrestling, America's number one fundraiser. All right, we got action coming up here in just a moment involving two sexy Brian Christopher. Here he comes right here. Before we get the match underway, we would like to get him here and talk a little bit about some of the action that he's got coming up in the USWA in the days ahead. May take a moment. He's going to sort of have to fight his way over here through all of his fans and admirers as he makes his way around the ring, greeting the fans along the way. He wears the USWA heavyweight title around his waist. Here is Brian Christopher, and Brian, it's quite a week you got coming up. Quite a week, Dave Brown. You know, I've been sitting in the back all day long. I've been sitting in the back all show long, waiting to come out here. And I know all these people over here and everybody sitting at home has been waiting to see Brian Christopher. But I got one question. I got one question to ask. Hey, I want to ask all you something over here. 
Why is it? Let me ask you a question real quick. Why is it when Bill Dundee came walking out here, everybody gave him high fives, everybody wanted to hug on Bill Dundee and give him kisses? Why is that? Right now, they might boo and say they didn't do it, but I saw it with my own two eyes. Bill Dundee is not a man. He's not the man that Brian Christopher is. Sure, he might have the world heavyweight title around his waist right now, but he's not a true champion. He's not a true champion like too sexy. Well, Bill Dundee, I'm going to prove that to you this week because we got a special match, Dave Brown, an extra special match. It's a roulette Four poles, four poles on each, each turnbuckle with a box on each pole. In two of those boxes, they'll be empty. But in one of them will be my chain, and in the other box will be Bill Dundee's bull whip. Four boxes on top of four poles, Dundee. And you know what? Like I've said before, you're too old. You're too old to climb four poles. So what it looks like is I'm going to be the man. I'm going to climb each and every pole. I'm going to get that chain. I'm going to get that bull whip. And then Bill Dundee, all these people that were giving you hugs, all these people that were giving you high fives, no more. Never again will you see that because I'm going to put you out of wrestling once and for all. I will be the man to retire superstar Bill Dundee. But you see, I should be the world heavyweight champion, but he won't give me a title match. He won't give Jerry Lawler a title match. He's got that match where everybody's name will be dropped in there. See, he wants it to be easy. But I'm going to tell you what, Bill Dundee, I am the luckiest man on the face of the earth. I'm lucky I was born with good looks, and I'm going to be lucky this week because my name is going to be the one drawn out of that bowl, Bill Dundee, and then I will beat you, and I will become the Unified World Heavyweight Champion. And Bill Dundee, you know what, Dave? It just hit me. I just remembered something. Did you see Jerry Lawler when he was interviewing those Shriners? Did you see that? Yes, sir. Did, did you see those Shriners sitting there looking like three old mummies with hats on their head? Well, Bill Dundee, I heard you were supposed to be in there, but the Shriners said you are too old. You are too old to stand beside them. <laughs> Here comes Bill Dundee right here, and he's got the bull whip in his hand. Bill. Dave, we're not going to fight. Come here. Come here, Mr. Future. Oh, you think I'm going to walk over I there while you got a bull you whip? A question. Huh? There's nothing wrong with them men in the Shriners. When you get a little older, you may understand what that's all about. A little older. A little older. Oh, my Let gosh, Dundee. Let me ask you a question. What's the greatest rock and roll group in the world? The Rolling Stones have been around for 30 years. What is the hottest selling ticket in town? It's the Eagles, brother. They've been around for 30 years. What is the heavyweight champion in boxing? It's George Foreman. You know what's wrong with you, punk? You can't wait to be great. You're trying to get it now, and it ain't never gonna happen. You know what, Dundee? All those things you just said, George Foreman, the Rolling Stones, they all got something in common with you. They're all washed up. You understand? They were good in their day, Dundee. Hey, Dundee. I wouldn't advise that. I wouldn't advise that because you got your bull whip. But you see this right here? This is called a chain, Dundee. Hey, I'll tell you what. Just like I said, you're washed up. Just like Jerry Lawler is right behind. Brian Christopher with a chain around his fist. Dundee going at it. Dundee smacks him with a right fist. Oh, into the ring post goes Brian Christopher. He's still got the chain, but not doing him much good. Oh, no. Whoa. Brian smacks him again with a chain. Here comes a referee. Here comes David Haskin. Here comes Ken Raber. Some help. And they get in between them. They get in between them. Brian. Brian, you. That's fine with me, Dundee. Come on, old man. Brian, you got a match schedule here. Maybe it's time we wrap this up and let's get the match underway. We get Brian on headed toward the ring. Uh, put that bull whip for safekeeping somewhere else. Brian. Now come on, Brian. 
come on nothing. He's the one that came out here on my interview time. Well, Dundee, you see this full whip? You hear that, Dundee? This week, I'm going to put this full whip across your back, and I'm going to put this chain right across your forehead, old man. Brian Christopher finally throwing down the bull whip. He's still got the chain. Gorgeous George III awaits in the ring. And we would like to get the match underway, quite frankly. Hollywood, California, Gorgeous George III, the USWA heavyweight champion. Referee right now telling him to get rid of that chain, take it off. And he takes it away from Christopher. And we are ready for our final event of the day, Brian Christopher and Gorgeous George III. And the safest thing for the chain, the referee has it in his pocket. And oh. I've seen times when referees need it for him. Yeah. <laughs> he needs a bull whip also some of those That's times. <laughs> Gorgeous George backs Christopher across the ring into the corner. Nice block by Christopher. Follows with a right hand that puts him down on his knees. George's George third appeal to the referee he said he hit me with a fist, and the referee said, "Ah, oh, things look pretty even there to me." So the match continues. Brian Christopher dancing around the ring. What a fine athlete he is. Nobody can question that at all. George's George third a little misleading. You don't expect him to be the caliber wrestler that he actually is. Has a great amateur background that he brings to the professional sport. And the whip puts Christopher in, and Brian scores with a right hand. Christopher, he is a rough and tough son of a gun. I got to tell you, he loves to get in there and scrap. He just has that attitude, and uh, he's able to back it up with the moves that he has, holding that USWA heavyweight title, standing side headlock. Gorgeous George pulling it up tight, and speaking of pulling, there's uh -huh. a handful of hair with Brian. Yeah, Mr. Christopher doesn't mind uh, using whatever to grab advantage, including uh, yanking gorgeous George Third's long blonde hair. That's what he's doing. He yanks that head back, back to the ropes. Referee wants a break. That was a good move by Brian to be able to get the hold broken, and he's able to get a little room to fire that fist. Reversal on the whip. Look at that Christopher go here. Scoop, slam, and... Gorgeous George III takes another ripping right hand and a lecture from the referee. Gorgeous George III headed that way. Brian Christopher spits his chewing gum at him. I think it got on the bottom of the referee's foot. We've got a television time limit on this match, and there's only about yep. a minute to go, Dave, in time. Yeah, wind it down. That's one reason we wanted to get them in action here. Brian and Dundee got into it instead. That ate up a lot of the match time. Did you ever see two guys that just had such a total disliking for each other as Christopher and Dundee? You can see Brian baiting Bill Dundee, and you can see Bill's blood boil every time he has to talk to him face to face. As the time is running out, Gorgeous George the third from behind, hooking on that chin. As he heads into it, we're not going to have time for a pin, even if somebody gets to it. He drops the elbow, down he goes, and we've got to get out of here as we'll cut away for a break, and we'll be back. The world-renowned USWA Wrestling Academy comes to Nashville, Tennessee. The wrestling school that has produced legendary professional wrestlers. Jerry the King Lawler, Tommy Wildfire Rich, Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert, The Rock and Roll Express, Jeff Jarrett, and more. Now you can attend the USWA Wrestling Academy and be trained by the best. Send for your application today to USWA Wrestling Academy, P.O. Box 1783, Hendersonville, Tennessee, 37077. Be sure to enclose a self-addressed stamped envelope. Learn to wrestle from the best. The USWA Wrestling Academy. Bubbling over with action. We're out of time, Dave. We, we got to go for Dave Brown. Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of USWA Championship Wrestling.